I walk in the living room, and there's Lemmy sitting there in his underwear, nothing else, doing a phoner, smoking cigarettes, got an ashtray in front of him, pal, this high with smokes. It's noon. He sort of looks at me like, all right, man, as he keeps on doing his thing. And then uh, he's like, hey, how are you? And I mean, you know, growing up, looking up to this guy, like, how could the dude get any more badass than he already is? And there he is with a bottle of Jack next to him, just out of the shower in his underwear, nothing else. Like, you want a drink? And I'm like, yeah, I'll drink. Some of these young bands and even the veteran bands were trying to keep up with Lemmy, you know, with his, you know, sheer intake of substances, his lack of the need for sleep, his his ability to rock and roll and party and and you know, get laid, whatever it was, and. Uh, <laughs> At the end of the five days, these guys are like, you know, he didn't sleep at all, and he's just still just, you know, he's just Lemmy, you know what I mean? He's never, you never see him stumble, you never see him, like, falter on his words. He's always eloquent when he speaks. Ozzy goes up to him and, and like, you know, with his eyes down to hear him, and he goes, Lemmy, what, you know, what the fuck, man? <laughs> you know, what, what do you, how do you do it? Five days, no sleep, and, and all this stuff. And Lemmy just looks at him and goes, after a while, you just coast. A coast! I'd be fucking screaming through bars as they drove me away, you know. He comes out and he, he looks ashen faced and he goes, oh, I don't think fuck, you know. And he goes, he looks at me and he goes, I hope I don't look as bad as you do. I go, if he's saying that to me, I must be fucking th three seconds from death. I remember coming out of my hotel room, it's one of the first days of the tour, and uh, I see Lemmy. It <laughs> looked a little rough, hungover, and he's standing next to an elevator, waiting to get on the elevator, smoking a cigarette with, with white shorts on, no shirt, white shorts on, and white cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. And he's, he's like going, he went out to get ice or something for a Jack and Coke at like 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> in this tarmac, the engine's off, this plane is like a, a, the hot box from hell. Everyone's like cooking in their clothes because someone is late getting on the plane. You're like, God, whoever's late, I'm going to kill him. Because we've been sitting there for like 10 minutes, and everyone's just like, okay, this sucks, because you're roasting. And you hear something coming up the ladder, up the stairs, you know, the, the plane's kind of moving, you hear this clambering and gruff men grunting, and, and you, you smell tobacco and leather. It's Lemmy! And, and <laughs> it's, it's Motorhead. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, Mickey D, it's, it's the crew, they're, 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 they're late for the flight. Okay, fair enough. So everyone's like, oh, oh, yay, all is forgiven. It's Motorhead, you know. And uh, so everyone's finding seats, and there's one seat left. Henry, hope you don't mind if I sit next to you. And you're like, and like, you know, there's one of those plates, you're like, and there's Lemmy, like, you know, I like guess. So Lemmy, I almost want to. And the, you know, we take off, and we're flying to wherever we're going, and... Um, the, the nice man with his tiny cart comes through to pour the drinks and he says to the guy, Coke, glass, ice. And the guy lays it all out, goes by, then he looks at his manager guy, goes, the bottle. And out of a leather bag, this bottle of some brown alcohol comes out and it is handed to him. And he corked it. This is this classic Lemmy, you know, like not a dumb man. He looks at me as he pours some lethal amount. <laughs> you know, like there's at least room for like four drops of Coca-Cola in this thing. And he says, I will not be betrammeled by a mere airline attendant. And I said, he said betrammeled. I, I don't know anyone who uses the word betrammeled. I mean, you know, I will not be inconvenienced. Like, but he said betrammeled. So I go up and say, I'm Jason Newston, playing bass with these guys. Go, I know who you are, you cunt. I pretty much walked up to him, super excited, and uh, um, offered to buy him a drink, you know, because what would be better than having a drink with Lemmy? And the, he said something to the effect of, you're not buying me a drink, I'll buy you a drink, you're in my town, you know, and it's good to meet you and all that. And um, whatever he was drinking, you know, he's, what do you have? And I said, whatever you're having, and I didn't drink whiskey or anything like that back then. I mean, it was just strictly beer, you know? And I just started drinking with him, you know, whatever he was drinking, probably Jack, and and I was ordering beers as well because I really didn't like the taste of the whiskey. And uh, 
I tried to keep up with him because we stood and talked for a little bit and hung out and I just kept drinking with him and drinking with him and drinking with him. And the next thing I know, <laughs> uh, um, the next thing I know, I'm being carried out of the hotel by our manager the next day, um, basically puking and shitting at the same time. I had like severe alcohol poisoning and uh, we, were have, we were supposed to be flying to Amsterdam because that was the next stop on the promotional tour. And I couldn't even walk. I couldn't get out of bed. I was, I was a disgusting mess. And I, I literally, Johnny Z had to carry me over his shoulder through the airport, like every, every three minutes having to run to a garbage can, anything to throw up. Finally get on the plane. I'm like puking in the bathroom while we're taking off. It was just, it's the sickest, the worst like I've ever been in my life. And it lasted for like two days. I was just so unbelievably sick and hung over. And, and, um, cut to like a couple months later, it was April 86 and it's our first show in London with Anthrax. First time headlining in London. And Lemmy shows up, he comes walking in the dressing room and he looks at me, he goes, how you feeling? We have kind of an interesting relationship. Uh, was defined early on an early meeting and uh, Lemmy asked me if I wanted to do some lines with him or something. And uh, I said, um, I don't drink or do drugs. And I had found historically many people who party are a little bit put off by that or um, are offended because they've offered you something, you know, and you've, you've passed, basically, you know, and you've said no to their, to their generous offer. Uh, Lemmy's reaction was, oh, well, more for me. And uh, that was, <laughs> and we were off to the races. It was like, okay, you know, hey, I don't have to share with this guy. Perfect.